Good afternoon and welcome to this brand new series as part of Felcraft Cast. I'm Hammy, hope you're well and good. Um, we are going to be doing something a little bit different and we're going to be getting into Magic the Gathering, none other than that famous card game that's been out for a whole bunch of time, been so successful all around the world, it does have a little bit of a reputation and I'll be honest with you, at least to me, when I sort of first heard of it as geeky, similar things like that. It is not the case, we're all fantasy fans here, we all love a bit of it and in terms of Games of Thrones and similar kind of stuff got a bit of that kind of vibe as well a bit of spacey things too so we're going to be going on a new series where we get into magic we're going to start with magic jewels of the planeswalkers because it is an absolutely brilliant point at which to start magic jewels of the planeswalkers is really sort of a slightly Magic Light is a harsh way to describe it. It's really a great way to get into the game because it's got a really good tutorial. Um, it simplifies things a lot and gives you brilliant instructions and then gets you in, if you've never played card games before, for example, um, to this sense of building decks, the mechanics of the game and similar. But there's a much richer, once you feel happy with Jewels of the Planeswalkers, magic experience that you can get into in terms of the paper card game, going out and buying the actual cards. And there's also Magic the Gathering Online, which gives you a whole bunch more options as well. But in terms of getting into magic, you can of course play Magic Jewel of the Planeswalkers on iPad, you can also play it on Steam and a whole bunch of other platforms. So without further ado, we're going to jump in just as a little taster intro, um, play some of the tutorial through and get into magic ourselves. In terms of my personal experience, I've played magic a little bit in a light way in the past, but I'd really love to get into it really fully. So I'm going to start the whole journey again and we'll all go on it together. So, jumping out of the way, a little bit of the magic law and similar if you're not used to it. What is a planeswalker? Well, magic, you are a mage and you're able to jump through many, many worlds and planes of existence of a vast place called the multiverse. And mana fuels that. Only planeswalkers can call upon and wield mana. And in the magic storyline, uh, there are lots of different types of planeswalker. Um, you explore different planes, you use different types of deck and different minions and hopefully defeat your enemies by doing so. So in terms of story and lore, all looking very shiny. Let's jump on in and show you a little bit about the game and its core mechanics and let's get stuck in. So firstly we're going to go to Sync Player. Um, magic Jewel of the Planeswalkers for 2015. New Magic season and the new game has just released. You can get it for about, UK wise, it's about five or six pounds on various different formats. Um, on iPad it's absolutely free to play so you can jump in and just give it a go completely free. PC, five or six pounds to start with. Let's jump in single player. So we are going to go through the tutorial, so we're going to just go quest by quest, we're going to work it in really easily, when we've got going we're going to then try and play some of you on stream and play some fun, and then beyond into the series we're going to get into the paper card game as well. But let's just take a look at our first quest in terms of knowing the basics, playing lands, summoning creatures and combat. Now, collectible card games, ooh there we go. It's really just stolen my thunder and immediately taken. We draw mana from lands we visited and use that energy to summon creatures to defeat their rivals. So creatures can attack and they can also block. Let's get stuck in. So most card games, as we have been Welcome describing... Welcome to Magic. You and your opponents take the role of planeswalkers, powerful sorcerers who can magically travel between planes of existence. You'd much rather listen to a, the dulcet American tones rather than my good self. Um, but before we jump in, I will let the, uh, the voiceover explanations go as we go. Um, but do remember, of course, that in every card game you have a deck of cards and you are generally trying to defeat your opponent. And you can see that if we take a little uh, peek in the bottom corner and in the top right corner, um, we have our health pool, the amount of cards left in our deck, and similar as well. To win, you must defeat your opponent by bringing his life total down from 20 to 0. To do this, you will use a variety of tools, represented in the game as a deck of shuffled cards. All players have their own decks to play with. We call this your library. Lovely stuff. You've got a deck. At the beginning of the game, each player draws seven cards. If you don't like your opening hand, you have the option of redrawing, called a mulligan. To take a closer look at your cards, zoom in. Lovely stuff. Okay, we see we've drawn our opening hand, and you can see that that is a very traditional seven cards. A lot of card games you play, you'll get a seven card starting hand. So naturally, you can see in the bottom left, our deck's gone down to 53, we've got seven in hand. Lovely stuff. Um, so in Magic, you use um, uh, the mana from the lands that you've visited, so your lands. And your lands are effectively your source of 
energy or they're the sort of the pace of the game you cannot play um, more spells or more minions or more powerful things than you have lands on the table and that you can actually use so we won't skip too far ahead but you can see here we've got all of our lands and because we are a green planeswalker we have forest lands and you can see when we get into our various different minions and spells a lot of our different minions and spells will feed off greenland so there you go um, you can also see that we've got a couple of minion cards here, creatures as it were, and we can zoom in. As you can see, magic cards have many symbols and words. We'll explain what they mean as the game continues. Cool stuff. So you can see we've got a creature here, I've got some nice flavour text, artist, and lots of other bits and bobs, but I won't jump the gun, we'll explain these as we go through. Okie dokie, you can see we have all of our different colours of land there. So we need to do our five quests to start with. For the first five quest, you're playing a green deck. Green's specialty is large, powerful creatures. Your opponent is Crimson Mage. I like the sound of large, powerful creatures. To cast spells or summon creatures, you're gonna need some resources. In magic, the main resource, mana, comes from lands. Every turn you may play a land from your hand. Once you have enough lands on the battlefield, you'll have the mana you need to cast spells, including summoning creatures. Okay, Play okay. a land now. So, a good place to start, dropping a land. So as you heard there, the land piece is the piece that paces you, that is the pace of the game. Um, you can only drop one land a turn, and naturally for some spells and creatures you will need more land than others. So that is effectively the constrained resource of this game. You want to play land, the more land you have, the more funky stuff you can do. Let's play land. Since you don't have enough mana to cast any spells yet, we'll pass the turn to Crimson Mage. Now one of the things about magic, rather than other card games, if you've played like Hearthstone or Pokemon or other things like that, some people get a little bit confused when they first take a look at magic because there's a bit more to a turn. Now it's nothing too complicated, um, you just need to take it step by step and to understand what's going on at each phase. Um, Magic 2015 Jewel of the Planeswalker games do a really good job of explaining that. This is the basic tutorial, but it's just something to bear in mind when you see a little animation in the bottom left hand corner here going through different turn phases. It is not something um, that is relevant in this particular game, but we'll come to it later. So you can see combat there, the combat main phase, and then going through an end phase. Crimson Mage will also play lands to build the resources he needs to cast spells. Come out to me, Crimson Mage. And there we go, now, he's crimson, he he's going to fire spell. land on the table. And we get, oh! Crimson Mage has summoned a creature. Attacking with creatures, like Crazed Goblin, is the major way players defeat their opponents. On every creature card... Sorry, right back in. Um, sorry for that little break. Um, okay, Crimson Mage, we've thrown down a land and attacking with creatures like Crazy Goblins, the main way players defeat their opponents. So, no massive surprise there. You throw down creatures, and creatures are dependent on the amount of land that you have. So, that is very much one way of getting some presence down on the table to attack your opponents. Um, the bottom corner that plays is power and toughness. So, power and toughness, you can think of those as attack and defense, or attack and health, how much damage can a creature do, and then toughness is how much health can it take before it gets destroyed or gets knocked off the table into a discard pile. So let's Power zoom into our is the goblin. amount of damage a creature deals in combat. There we go, so the first number is very much the power or the attack, whatever you like to call it, that's how much damage it's going to do. Toughness is the amount of damage needed to destroy this creature. And there you go, you can call toughness health or something similar if it helps you. But you need to be able to deal that, and we'll come on to it in a second. The toughness generally needs to be dealt within one turn. So in other card games, there may be, uh, take Pokemon for example, um, you may have a life value for a particular card, and it can take damage 
until that life value is met. And then when it's taken that amount of damage, then it is removed from the table. So let's say a four health minion in Hearthstone or Pokemon or something, you need to do four damage to that over a series of turns. The damage stacks up and then it gets killed when or knocked out or removed when that damage is done. Um, magic is a little different. We'll see that in a bit. Every spell has a mana cost. To summon Crazed Goblin, it costs Crimson Mage a single red mana. It's represented by this symbol. Okay, so mana cost for spells, mana cost whether you call them spells or whether you call them creature cards, whatever you'd like to call them, you will have a mana cost in this top right. So that is one um, red mana. He had to use up or tap his land to pay to cast this spell. Tapped cards are turned sideways. So you can see that his mana is moved onto its side, and that is known in magic as tapping. What that basically shows is you turn it on the side and you say, I have used this resource to pay for something on this particular turn. So naturally, you couldn't just use um, your lands, your mana, your resource over and over again. So that is tapped. Mana costs can be more complex than crazed goblins. Summoning this creature will cost four mana, and two of the mana must be green. Okie dokie. So, effectively there, going from our one red mana, we've then got two mana um, that have to be green here, indicated by the two trees, and then two mana as well. So, um, that means that that is a four mana cost, as the lovely American lady explained, and then two of those mana must be green. So whenever you read the mana cost of a card, just think, um, it will cost this amount of mana in total, and any symbols are a specific requirement of a colour of land or a colour of mana. So, four mana, two of those have got to be green. But I could use any other colours of mana to fulfil the remaining two. When a player gains control of a creature, it can't attack or do anything that requires tapping. This is called summoning sickness. These creatures will have a dizzy look to them. But we can expect the crazed goblin to attack on Crimson Mage's next turn. Okie dokie. So, throwing down any creature, you have to wait one turn before you can actually attack with it. Now, in Magic, um, in Duel of the Plains Walkers, you can see it represented by that little sort of dizzy spinning area at the top there. Um, however, in the actual paper card game, you can ha put it into play tapped or similar things like that. But next turn he can attack for now, he's just going to sit there. Now it's our turn. Let's summon Colonian Tusker. To cast this spell, play a second land and then choose the creature that costs two green mana. Okie okay, dokie, okay. next land goes down, let's play that. And then let's find two green mana. We can see two trees on Colonian Tusker there, right at the top. So there we go, that's three and three. Lovely stuff. Okay, let's get him down on the table and start doing some stuff with it. This creature's power and toughness are 3-3. Three, three. More than a match for that crazed goblin. Let's pass the turn. Good stuff. Remember, of course, we've got summoning sickness, so we're going to have to wait for our opponent. And then... Now, Crimson Mage will play a land and then attack us with the crazed goblin. The crazed goblin has to attack because its rules say it must. Okay, interesting. So the Craig Goblin is forced to attack, attacks each turn if able, so he cannot choose uh, uh, not to attack with Craig Goblin. So there goes the second land. The combat phase. Oh, here we go. When a creature attacks, it taps and moves forward. Now you have a chance to respond with creatures you want to block with. You happen to have a creature on the battlefield that will block very well. Cool stuff. Okay, so our 1-1 one, one Crazed Goblin is attacked, but we now have the blocking ability. So again, this is not common to some other card games, but in Magic you can if choose If Crimson Mage's attacking creatures aren't blocked, you will take damage. Your Colonian Tusker can keep you safe. Creatures with Summoning Sickness can block. Block the Crazed Goblin! Okay, let's block him out the way. So I'm going to... Um, click on the Tusker, that declares him, and then I click on the Goblin, and we can see the line comes through, that blocks him. So there we go, I've got myself a nice block, and then click the block button, that will help me block against. During the combat damage step, 
each creature deals damage equal to their power. This time, these creatures will deal damage to each other at the same time. Crazed Goblin will die, and the Colonian Tusker will survive. Okie dokie. So, remember that I mentioned earlier, in magic you need to be able to do full amount of toughness damage, health damage to a minion in one go for it to actually be destroyed. Um, here, the Crazed Goblin is going to do me one damage, but I have three toughness. I am going to do the full amount of toughness to the Crazed Goblin, so the Crazed Goblin will get removed, and my minion will survive. And he will also, at the end of the turn, heal back up to his full health. Boom! There we go. At the end of every turn, each creature heals. Any damage dealt to them is removed. You don't have to keep track of damage from turn to turn. Good stuff. So as you can see, everyone heals up at the end of each turn, and then creature damage is removed. So at the end of this turn, suddenly my Tusker is going to be three health again and ready to roll. So we'll wait for the end of the turn. Play another land. My turn, beginning of the turn, I land. Now it's our chance to attack Crimson Mage. No longer summoning Tiffness, we can attack. Let's click on him and then we will attack by clicking the attack button. Because he doesn't have any creatures to block with, Crimson Mage will take three points of damage. Yay! Damage to the Crimson Mage. Bang. You don't and have any 17. spells that you can cast for now, so let's pass the turn. So you notice in that turn that I had three lands, but neither of my uh, spells, my creature cards in hand, um, cost three lands. So there's really nothing I could do, even though I had some energy. Ooh. Got a blood crazed neonat. Neonate. Oh, okay, she's having a little chew there. Attacks each turn if able. Whenever blood crazed neonate deals combat damage to a player, put a 1 1 damage counter, a 1 1 counter on it. So, um, whenever this deals damage to uh, me, um, it will become 1 1 stronger. So, I want to kill this. If it keeps doing damage to things and doesn't die, it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger with an additional. Um, uh, damage and an additional toughness. So it's good to get that card out of the way nice and quick, I think. Keep playing lands. Yep, I certainly will. Let's throw a land down. Now, ooh, we can cost a rumbling battle. Let's take a look at that. That's just a 4 4, nice, solid, nice big creature. I'm happy to have that on the table. Now remember, that's got summoning sickness. That's not going to do anything but. Time to attack. Attack again. Send your Colonian Tusker into combat. Remember that you can't attack with your Rumbling Bayloth yet, because it has summoning sickness. It does sickness. have summoning sickness, so I'm going to attack this. It's if important chooses to, to block. know that in Magic, you can only decide that your creatures are attacking an opponent. You don't have control over which of your opponent's creatures will block. Okay, so whether he blocks or not, we'll find out. Remember, he doesn't have to block, but he is Unless chosen Unless the card to. says otherwise, blocked creatures deal all damage to the creatures that blocked them. No damage is dealt to the defending player. Blocking with small creatures to not take any damage is sometimes a good strategy. Good stuff. So, there we go, the Blood Craze Neonate is down. And just with one health left, our Colonian Tusker, our stalwart is surviving. Another land goes down, and he summons a ooh, Blood Rock Cyclops. Attacks each turn if able, and that does a 3 3. However, he is summoning Sickness. So wait. End of turn, it's a go. This time, we're gonna try something a little different. Instead of playing your land and casting a spell before combat, wait until after combat. Good stuff. Okay, so this time, you know earlier I mentioned that you can. there are different phases. There's a main phase, a combat phase, and similar. So this is where there are different elements in a turn of magic to before. So a lot of... Um, card games as well, you will play whatever your energy source is, or whatever your mana source is, you will then resolve all of your attacks and similar, and then that will be the end of your turn. However, magic, you can actually um, play lands towards the end of your turn as well as at the beginning, so there will be some uses for that. Okay, so we'll wait till after combat this time. Now, attack with both of your creatures. Both to attack. It looks like Crimson Mage has decided not to block with his Bloodrock Cyclops. So he'll take seven damage. Awesome. Loving it. Seven damage. He's wanting to keep that minion alive. That's what I'm trying to 
14 down. Oh, with a rumbling bell off, halfway down. During the main good. phase after combat, go ahead and play your land. land. You'll be in great shape to win if you cast this creature next. Okay, so we can now see that um, the reason for that is if I played the land and then I play my centaur creature afterwards, then naturally there's not been any chance for my opponent to react to me playing that creature. If I played it before combat, perhaps he could have done some things or use some cards that have perhaps taken this card out for some reason. Um, probably a little bit more about this, we won't worry about that quite now, but different phases can use different kind of options as to when you play your card. Crimson Maze will play a land and attack. Things are looking good. Looking good. He's not going to block next turn. I like that. Um, obviously we're just tutorialing, so we know that he's going to attack. Come out to me, Cyclops. Good blocking option here. Okay, so you can see that our centaurs have got seven health but three attacks, so that is a great blocking card. Um, so yeah, there we go. So you can see that naturally we will do the amount of damage required to remove Cyclops. Three down, but Cyclops dies because we have a Titanic seven health. Our Theodore's Band centaurs will survive, and then they also. All you need to do now is attack. With everything. I like the sound of attacking with everything. Oh, and there's an attack all button. How convenient. <laughs> Charge to the face. Charge to the face. Now you can see with flying and damage. Remaining 10 is done in one turn. In quest 2, we'll spice up the battle with other kinds of spells. Yeah, loving it. Score 1 for Team of Velcraft. So, back to the menu. Okie dokie, so for now that is the end of our just start of our new series and our little jump into magic. So what we did there is just have a little bit of a chat about magic, about how it works compared to some other card games, and then we got stuck into a little bit of fun in terms of trying the first tutorial. Um, so what that really introduced us to, just as a new beginner, uh, was more the concept of some new cards, um, the different turns of a magic phase, um, the concept of blocking which doesn't introduce in some other card games, and then also how to play lands and how to use those lands to cast spells. So very much a nice dipping of a toe into the very very deep waters of Magic the Gathering, just getting started and just having a look and seeing if we can enjoy it. So thanks so much for tuning in, we're going to continue this as a regular series probably both on stream and on YouTube, um, just as a little sign off for us, we're going to be not only going through Magic the Gathering 2015 Jewel of the Planeswalkers, enjoying some of that, we're also going to be wrapping up and doing some other bits now. So you can find us on twitch.tv forward slash youtube.com forward slash and at Fellcraftcast on Twitter. Thanks very much for tuning in.